Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is the start of week number five uh, in our challenge of road to 200k challenge by trading options, in particular the, using the wheel strategy. And so yeah, at this point uh, the market already turned down, so it's in the red even though it opened on a positive note in early in the session. and. Uh, before the open the opening uh, of the market even the futures on the sp5 sp500 were positive but yeah apparently the market now has taken a turn for the worse which of course benefits the calls that we sold but it goes the other way in terms of our puts so before we get into this uh, i would like to address uh, what is usually is the, the, the what was the elephant in the room from last week as you know, uh, I sold at the time uh, four uh, calls on four with a strike price of 11. And as you know, the acquisition cost of these shares was $13. And so uh, because the market, uh, or rather the stock price of four, uh, closed to uh, up, um, a close at uh, 11 27 dollars uh, on Friday so the calls were in the money and so it, those are much more likely to be assigned and so I would have to sell the shares at a loss I decided that I'm not going to let this happen and so I decided to buy back the calls uh, that I had sold of course taking a loss I realized a loss in this trade uh, which was a loss at around $150. But the reason behind this is because if I uh, wait for the calls to go into maturity uh, on Friday night, uh, and if they are assigned, because the price of the shares are above the strike price, I would have a loss close to $800. And there's a very reasonable chance that this might happen, all right? And so because of that, I decided to take a smaller hit now and get rid of these calls. And so I keep the shares and I will be able later on to perhaps sell them at uh, at least its acquisition price or higher. So I decided to take a hit of around $150 now rather than risking having a loss of 700 or close to 800, 800 euros later down the line. And so that is why uh, the, the calls are no longer in here. So because they were they were sold. And so, um, yeah, I needed to act pretty quickly because I do not want the, the market to change that much. I, I was comfortable. In taking that loss at around with with the stock price at around 11.27, so that is exactly what I did, and so the rest of the trades went pretty smoothly, and we are going to get there immediately, and I'm going to explain the rationale behind them, all of them. All right, so let's see uh, the trades that we did. Never mind this one. This was a cancelled trade. It was cancelled automatically because uh, when when I placed this trade, I also input another, uh, another trades and those trades filled up first. And when all uh, only this was remaining, the buying power was not enough to use as collateral to sell these puts. So the, the, um, the trade was automatically canceled, as you can see in the explanation right here. But uh, it's not really a, a very important issue and so let's see what happened with our trade so starting here as you can see i sold i bought back at, rather the four calls that i had sold on four i bought them at 38 cents each so this was a, a loss or rather a payment of 152 dollars plus 1.11 of fees and so Let's going to update our scoreboard right here. So the trade was closed today at 26th of August. The position was closed, all right, and was closed at a loss, as you can see here. And so right here with a fee of 111. So 
even though I already received some money, of course, for selling the, the calls, this turned out to be a loss of $142.27. I'm going to also use this value in the consideration of the break-even value that I would need to sell back the shares on four in order to at least break even or have a capital gain. But I'm going to do this off the video because this is just uh, an accounting detail for me. And of course, it's not the, the focus of, of this video, all right? And so moving on to the next trade, I decided also to go ahead and sell six calls on SLOD for the strike of 98. And so because I wanted to get some premium out of the fact that I have 600 shares on SLOD, why the strike at 98? Because uh, I considered putting it at 100, but the, the premium was very, very, very low. Probably it would be a better one right now because when I input the trade, the stock was losing for today and now it it's it is rising it turned into the green and so the calls are more valuable so probably it would be a worthwhile trade to uh, a word a word uh, a worthwhile trade to do it right now but because it was not at the time i decided to go with the 98 strike calls 98 is the the average price at which i bought these shares and so if i manage to having to sell them at least i break even on in terms of capital and i gain all the premiums uh, as the profit of all of these trades and so let's go ahead and add that add this to our uh, scoreboard all right and so this is a strike at 98 here all right the trade Let's copy this. The trade took place today at 26th. They are going to expire on the 30th of August, so next Friday. The formula is right here. These are six calls. I'm going to copy this formula, even though it's the same value, but because this is a call, and so I want to use this to consider the collateral as the acquisition price of the shares. So this is it. So let's see the other details of the trade. And so for the time being, this is the, uh, the price of acquisition or, or rather the premium that I paid for the, um, that I received rather for the the calls so this is 20 cents and i managed to receive a credit of 30 cents also as fees and commissions so this is 20 cents and this is 0 0.3 right actually i need to use a minus value right this is it so this is done right and let's move on to the next trade also, uh, on Pfizer, uh, because I have 200 shares, I decided to also sell two calls because the, val the, the stock price was very, very, very close to 29, which was the acquisition price of the stock. It still is very close. I decided to take my chances and set the strike at 29 and a half because even though I would get a lower premium, if the stocks are assigned, I would get a capital gain. And because I like the stock, the stock has good value, I don't mind keeping it for longer because I know uh, it's a good quality stock and if I have to sell it, might as well sell it with a capital gain than just breaking even on the price, all right? So this is it, we're going to add here. So this is the Pfizer stock, all right? This is a covered call with a strike price of 29 and a half. These are two, right? And again, I'm going to use this formula, which is exactly the same here. I decide, I forgot to put here the, the lock, but it's not really an issue. Let's 
copy here again right this is it and let's see what the premiums are so the premium was i think one was for 10 cents and the other one was for nine cents so this is basically on average nine and a half and so basically uh it, it was 105 so it's 210 on commissions so 2.1 and the average price was nine and a half so let's just take this decimal place off and this is right it's done all right another one the hymns this was a, this was an interesting trade that i did and so because uh as you know uh, the strike price uh, or rather the acquisition price uh, of my 400 him stocks was as a, is around 23 and uh, 0.25 and so if i made the calculations and if i buy these uh, 1000 shares because i sold 10 contracts 10 times 100 is 1000 shares uh, if I manage to buy these shares at 15 and a half, uh, my average uh, price or average cost of acquisition of my HIMS shares will go down to around 17.71. And this is something that I really, really do not mind at all, because as if you if we pull up the option chain for HIMS, you will see that. If, even if I have to use a strike of 18th, meaning I would have a capital gain, uh, so the, pri the, the it is feasible, it is rather feasible for me to sell a call on this price, all right, with this strike price. So I would be able to continue to sell calls on this, uh, on this stock, and of course trying to recoup all my money, at least breaking even, of course. If the stock goes below 15 and a half and the shares are assigned of course these um, these calls are less likely to be available at least for such a short period of time but then for sure even at a lower at a slightly lower price the two-week uh, option will be for sure available and as you can see the the premiums are reasonable and so i will be able to continue to sell calls on these shares and of course i will try i will also uh, sell some puts trying to lower the average price even further to try to get rid of the entire lot of shares but for the time being this is a situation and so let's input our trade so we received 15 cents we actually receive a credit of 3.5 which is always very 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 convenient so minus 3.5 i think i got it right if I'm not mistaken yeah this is it i sold 10 contracts all right so here these are 10 contracts and here these are cash covered puts with the strike price of 15 and a half and again same acquisition date and same expiration date and this is him stock all right let's see what's going to happen so i'm very curious to see how it pans out if this stock are going to be assigned or not very very ex <laughs> with a very high expectations and with what's going to happen all right in this case uh, american airlines puts for the same reason wanting to lower the average price to make sure we can get rid of this stock once and for all we received five cents for each stock or uh, we meaning five euros five dollars for each option with a fee of 225 so 0 0.05 with 2.75 we sold five contracts the stock is american airlines this is a cash covered put with a strike price if i'm not mistaken of 10 right yeah this is it right and the 
characteristics are the same in terms of acquisition and expiration date. All right, moving on from here, and we are uh, close to the end. As you can see, this is the same trade as this one, but with one less contract because I did not have enough buying power to, to sell uh, the eighth contract. All right, but nonetheless, it is not a, an issue. And as you can see, I sold the contracts for five cents. Not a very, very rewarding premium, but uh, of course, if I would go much further, uh, it would have been even less. And so I decided to go for it, even though it's, it, it's only for a week, so it's not that bad. So this is, the fees are 1.6 plus 74 cents, which gave us 234. All right, so it's 234 and with five cents this is on lift again the strategy is the same we want to lower the average price of lift to make sure we also can sell the entire lot of shares without incurring in a capital loss these are seven contracts right and these are the same characteristics we still have a few trades left from previous weeks uh of course you may you may be asking all right i uh, closed the contract the co the covered call or the calls that i sold on for what about american airlines because american airlines had an acquisition cost an average acquisition cost of 13.72 and I'm, I sold a covered call on 11. Yes, uh, it, the rationale is the same, but because of the price behavior of American Airlines, which are which is very very, be, very much below the the strike price of 11, I think with just four days left, uh, the likelihood of these this call being exercised is very very remote. And uh, as you can see here in the option chain, right here, this is the call that I sold. This is the, the contract that I have. And as you can see, it has a 96% of profit. So expiring uh, below the strike price of 11. So I'm not concerned about this, this call, which in all likelihood will expire worthless. And I would also uh, like to say because of course some of you may be asking well you knew it was a risky move to sell calls on four with a strike price of 11 knowing that you bought the shares for 13 why did you do that trade yes you're right and i admit it was probably a mistake but uh, looking back uh, i think that the main factor was that uh, the stock at the price uh, at the time uh, was priced at somewhere around 970 980 the four shares for motor company shares and uh, the call the calls when I sold them uh, had a probability of profit of around 91 92 percent so it was very very likely that the strike the, the stock price would remain below the strike price of 11. however last week uh, the stock went into a very very positive run it uh, went up by two percent uh, most of the days the other days one percent and so the stock went really really on a run and i think you can confirm this uh, by looking at the chart because if you look here at the one week, all right, you can see that it went always up for most of the week, all right, and especially at this point when it broke through the the, um, the strike price, and at this point, uh, of course, the possibility of the um, of being forced to sell the shares at a loss became very very real and i decided during the weekend all right i'm not going to take any more chances i'm going to take the loss and uh yeah get this thing out of the way uh, because this is not really a worthy situation because 
the I, I took a hit of about 150 the loss could be more than five times higher if I let it expire uh, in the money meaning I would have a loss because I was the one who sold the, the calls and so basically this this was a rationale but looking back probably even though we had the 90% probability of success the trade simply went against me uh, and in the hindsight probably that was a mistake and yeah basically that is it but nonetheless we are here to learn and these things will not be the last time that it happens and so it's a life of a trader uh, as we try to do always always better for ourselves and so this is all for the time being we'll reconvene at the at the weekend to see how the trades went and to wrap up this week of this road to 200k challenge using the wheel strategy that is all for now leave your comments below any suggestions you may have let me know also feel free to like the video and subscribe you can also send me a message on linkedin if you want to share your thoughts uh, through there so yeah i'll see you all the next weekend